to of all the things they don't have today that they had 20 years ago, Ed Sullivan, disaster movies, afros, Ted Kennedy's presidential hopes, <laughs> the Bee Gees, and of course, real breasts. <laughs> the thing I miss the most is drunks. We don't have any drunks anymore, just alcoholics, which is a shame because drunks were great. Drunks were funny. And that's why so many beloved show business figures in the past became beloved by playing drunk, like W.C. Fields and Foster Brooks and Otis on Andy Griffith and, uh, and Yeltsin. <laughs> These people brought laughter to millions, but then certain Grinches stole that. And people will make the rest of us feel guilty for laughing at things that are funny or nothing more than Grinches who steal enjoyment from everyone because they had a problem with something. Well, you know, we all have tragic associations with something. Even a chicken can be made tragic if your father was killed choking on an egg. <laughs> Drunks are funny. I say we bring them back and let Dudley Moore have a career again. <laughs> what do you think about? I'm certainly with you on that. I grew up with uh, Otis and I grew up with the um, Jackie yeah. Gleason show and Crazy Guggenheim and all that. And I always thought it was funny. I have to think it's part of our culture's victimization syndrome. You know, yeah. that suddenly it's a terrible disease. It's not their fault. It's not their fault and they're horrible victims. And I mean, alcoholics are sad, but drunks are funny. No, Alan? It has a big difference. You know, even back in the days of the Three Stooges, if Mo, Larry, and Curly slept in the same bed, it was <laughs> only because they didn't have wrench. There was nothing else going on there. <laughs> You're now saying that today, yeah. that would well, be seen as... Well, some people might. I don't, but you know. <laughs> you're, saying, you're saying three grown men sleeping in the same bed. You're snoring in sync with each other. <laughs> and the bed goes up into the wall. God knows what they do on the other side. It's because they had no rent. Right. That, that's all it was. It wasn't their fault. Well, look at What would W.C. Fields be seen as today. He'd be seen as dysfunctional, the dysfunctional family. His wife hated him. He's a drunk. He's an abuser. He's an abuser. Dogs and children. Dogs and children. He hates dogs and children. I mean, he wouldn't get a He'd job in the business. He'd be Rosé. <laughs> All right. Quickly, you two have anything to add on this? If not, we're getting out of here. Uh, well, I, I th eh, sorry, time is <laughs> yeah, No, I'm just kidding. I don't remember any of these funny drunks. I feel deprived. See, that's Being my age, that's I, all I remember are tragic drunks. You have been that, deprived. It's mm. for, um, although I had a boyfriend who was a drunk, who was a tragic drunk, but I thought he was, it was pretty funny when he would do <laughs> things like knock the table over or, you know, that's whatever. Funny. I mean, I, I found it kind yeah. of amusing and, and get lost in Florida for days at a time and no one would be able to find him and things we, like that. William Holden got drunk, hit his head on the coffee table died. I mean, does it get any funnier than that? Anyway, I, I have some tapes I want to show you after the show. When we come back, we're going to play Who Has Time to Read? Got a problem with any of this? Well, write to us at Politically Incorrect, 514 West 57th Street, New York, New York, 10019. to play. Who has time to read? Because in today's society, we don't have time to read, and yet there are so many fine books out there among them. Look at this. Diana Ross's autobiography came out a few months ago, <laughs> Secrets of the Sparrow. And look, I don't think a celebrity should write books at all, because I think it should be illegal. Then people would read about Churchill and world leaders and, and Howard Stern. But, uh, <laughs> but the other thing that amazes me about celebrities, that why I think it's a bad influence when kids read them, is that because they are celebrities, they think that everything that happens happens to them <laughs> is an event because it's happening. <laughs> now listen to this. this, is from the book. This is Diana Ross talking about her concert in Central Park. We all remember in 1983. <laughs> I don't know how long I had been on stage when the darkness appeared. Time is suspended when I am performing. <laughs> I believe Stephen Hawking is looking yes. at this. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't long before that tricky wind blew up again. This time it blew so hard, it blew the sun right out of the sky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
That was a rough day. Yeah, that was a terrible day. First the three. I had a nice day. No time, no sun. You'd think there would be a mention in the paper of that, you know. Sun exits galaxy. CB1. Pause in the No time. Solar system, now just system. You know, something. Not a system, not moving. No, not at all. Everything darkened. Suddenly, the sky was completely black, bewildering everyone, except those who have experienced night time. <laughs> <laughs> this night, um, it, the sun goes down. By the way, she is the new weather girl over yeah. at uh, CBS. <laughs> and again, here's another passage which I just think points up the fact that things that the rest of us would seem not vital, She's talking about uh, an episode when she was backstage with her husband, Arn. <laughs> I hang back a moment and then say to him with a little blush, I can't button my dress. <laughs> Could you ask my daughter, Tracy, to come and help me? Without hesitation, he says, quite matter-of-factly, I'll do it. <laughs> wow. 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 Yeah. You'd think he was rushing Wait, a machine gun nest. Were they already married? <laughs> they, they were married. I, I don't know if they were married at this point. Good question. But it. Well, anyway. Does he call her Diana? You think he calls her Diana at all? I think I, he calls her Miss Ross. Yeah, I think so. That's, yeah. Yes, I know that syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. Three little words. I don't know why I'm allowing this, but before I know it, I'm turning around, piling my hair on top of my head with my hands, with my no, with a machine. <laughs> And a, and a stranger is buttoning my dress. Oh. He starts at the top. As he clumsily tries to do up the buttons with his big hands, I realize the buttons go clear down to my bottom. A bulbous area at the top of my leg. I mean, she just realized that. Wait, he's a stranger? It's not her husband? Well, it's... He, she feels I think he's a stranger. He will become she's her husband because... He's he, letting her dress. He, he, re he reaches the middle of my back. He's having trouble with the buttons. I feel strange now. He says... I say to him, It's all right. I can have my daughter do it. But this is a man who has just climbed Mount Everest. <laughs> yeah, that is... Yeah. <laughs> button by button. He is no quitter. No. <laughs> Did this he, is metaphor and how much of this is real? He planted a flag in her ass, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says. It says... That's a good... This is a man who has just climbed Mount Everest. He is no quitter. He makes his way all the way down. He is finally finished. I let loose my hair. And we walk in to dinner together. That is... <laughs> I can't go on, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank my guests, Neil Parrish, Frank Vanijai, Elizabeth Wurzdal, and Alan Flybell. We'll see you tomorrow night with Ileana Douglas, Elizabeth, Lisa Slewa, and Barry White. Thank you. Barry White.